leading VMI, 42 to 37. It's a close game here tonight in the Vine Center. I'm Lindsay Keith, and I'm joined with Travis Doucette, a student for, from the Center for Worship, who has recently received uh, great rewards in his field. Travis, so great to have you here with us this evening. Hey, good to be here. Thanks for having me. Now, Travis, if I understand correctly, you're from Canada. That is correct. How did you find out about Liberty? It's really interesting. I uh, went to Bible school with uh, a person who used to attend here named Dalton Stoltz. And uh, Dalton and me were in Bible college together back home in Canada. And Dalton left midway through his degree to come play for the newly formed Liberty uh, ice hockey team down here. So uh, I finished my degree back in Canada. And every time I would talk to Dalton, he was talking Liberty this and Liberty that and blah, blah, blah. So he finally looped me into coming down on a, on a college for a weekend. So I come down on a college for a weekend and I just stepped foot on this campus and I was just overwhelmed with the presence of God. And I just really sensed that God had something down here for me and that I was to pursue very unorthodox. I'd done a, a bachelor's degree already. Um, I didn't want to do another, but the Lord had it that I would come down and do another bachelor's degree in the Center for Worship down here. Now, what made you decide to major in praise and worship? Well, I had, a, I had a really nurturing church back home in Canada, and uh, they provided lots of opportunities for me to, uh, to express myself and to use the musical gifting. And uh, it's one of those things where I just kept on walking through open door after open door. And there seemed to be the pattern that the Lord was just continuing to open these doors in music. So I just uh, kind of faithfully, and still am, just faithfully walking through every door that opens. Now, you've been here for a little while now. You're a grad student now yeah. in the seminary. Yeah. What have you learned so far from being at Liberty? Oh man, there's so much that I've learned. I was on the road for uh, three and a half years with an awesome group of guys in a band, a ministry team here called Exodus. And um, probably one of the key things that I've learned is that uh, ministry, especially music ministry, is about serving the needs of the local church. There's lots of people that go into music ministry thinking that they're gonna be the next crowd or the next Tomlin, that they're gonna be a rock star. And it's about them, it's about how they look, it's about their songs, it's about none of that. It's about serving the needs of the local church. It's about being in relationship with the people that you serve and loving on them and going the extra effort and saying, hey, how can I get up on the platform Sunday morning and make it easy so that you can respond to a revelation of who Jesus Christ is. Now, you obviously picked the right major because you have some gifts and talents. And not too far ago, you wrote God of the Ages, yeah. a song that has become a big hit. What inspired you and what made you think of those lyrics? You know what? It's, uh, it's something that took me completely by surprise. It wasn't something that I had planned on uh, doing. I don't think any songwriter sits down and says, hey, I'm going to write this great song that's going to you know, bless a whole bunch of people. Um, again, it was just walking through doors and being faithful with what God had done. The story behind that song is basically uh, during the summer of 2007, I was back home in Canada sitting at, my, uh, sitting at my piano and I was reading through Colossians 1 and there's this passage of scripture that describes who Jesus Christ is in the first chapter of Colossians between verse 15 and 18. And it just struck me differently. And I just began to sit at the piano and to play and just sing to the Lord. And uh, as I sang, the words just started to flow out. And the song was written in about five minutes. And uh, it's just purely scripture. And that's one of the reasons why I think so many people, uh, re so many people respond to it. It's not because I wrote some great song, it's the power of God's word. And I think when you can get the truth of God's word into people's mouths and have them use that to respond to God, it resonates with their heart, it resonates with their spirit. And uh, it's something that they, uh, that they can sing and respond to God using. Well, it definitely touched Charles Billingsley, who decided to make it a part of his album and even name his cover title, God of the Ages. Yeah. How did you get connected with Charles? Wow, well, what an amazing guy, first of all, Charles is. Uh, he's become a really great friend of mine, and uh, what an incredible heart he has, and what an incredible um, pastor he is to Thomas Road. Just really understands the needs of the people, and is really there to serve, to not make much of him, but to make much of Jesus. And uh, it was great. We, uh, we ended up using that song at our spring uh, program that we host at the Center for Worship in Thomas Road. And uh, Dr. Whaley, God bless him, called me up on the spot and said, hey, you're going to conduct this. We, had not, we hadn't talked about it before. And just right on the spot, called me up to conduct God of the Ages, which the choir was performing that night. Long and the short of it is that uh, Pastor Jonathan Falwell heard the song, asked for us to do it at the end of the program and said, hey, we need to do this again on Sunday. Called up Charles and said, hey, you're, you're learning this. And then once Charles had learned it, I think the Lord really used the song to speak to him and he really fell in love with it. And uh, the rest is history. Now, this song hit number two on the Billboard charts. Were you surprised with the success that it achieved? Oh man, I think, uh, 
I, I think that's a big yes. I, you know, no one ever goes out to, to, to say, hey, I'm going to sit down and write a song that charts on the billboard, let alone goes to number two. I'm just really humbled by the whole thing. And, uh, you know, a lot of people ask, you know, does it change you? Does it, does it, does it make any difference? You know, I think, I think my life hasn't changed at all. The thing, the thing that I love is that I've become content doing the mundane. My life is pretty simple. I wake up, I go to, uh, I go to class, I, uh, I come and I help Dr. Whaley, I get him a cup of coffee in the morning. But out of, out of uh, my desire to be faithful in the small things, I believe the Lord's entrusted me with some other things. And uh, I think that's how the Lord works, is that if you'll be faithful in the small things, he'll entrust you with bigger things. And uh, I think God of the Ages was just a, a really special song that the, uh, the Lord entrusted me with to birth. And I look at it now and I, I think to myself, man, I, I don't have any personal onus on it. I don't look at it and say, oh, I wrote that. I look at that and I just think, you know, man, that's the power of God at work, man. The power of God through his word. So it's pretty well, awesome. It's exciting to hear your heart that you have for the things of the Lord. Thank you for taking the time to come and talk with us. Thank and you so share much. That. Appreciate right. it. And we'll be right back with more halftime. We cannot successfully defend our religious liberties unless we have Christian lawyers, Christian judges who know the law and can battle on that terrain in the courtrooms, uh, before judges, as judges. We need to train a new generation to use law for good. Law and morality are never at odds with one another. In fact, they are twin sisters. Liberty University School of Law is a school of law whose time has long since come. I was created for a purpose. Life is a gift. Life is a gift. I, choose I choose not to waste it. I am destined, I am destined, I am destined, I am destined to, accomplish to accomplish great things. I will help people. I will help people, will help people to live a better life. Have a unique perspective. I have a unique perspective of the world around me. I will make a difference. I will make a difference in tomorrow's world. I am here. I am here for a reason. I am a student. I am a student. I am a student at Liberty University. Welcome back to the Vine Center, an exciting matchup in the Big South Conference as the Flames of Liberty lead the cadets of VMI 42 to 37. And I'll tell you what, we saw about everything there was to see in that first half. An explosive game on the offensive end for both teams, but Liberty got off to a quick start with their four and their five man Conan going right down the lane and jamming that one home. But then it was Antoine Burris who got the assist on the first dunk. Got a little taste of his own, and he cleaned up the glass all day in the first half. Nine rebounds, 14 points, mostly on putbacks. And then it was Nick Gore off the bench for Duggar Balcom. Came on, stroking three after three, he had nine points. And then the senior Adam Lawton from Richmond driving to the basket. And then the sophomore Keith Gabriel from Charlotte, North Carolina, doing what he does best, knocking down the three-point shot. And there you see the halftime stats. 23 pointers taken by VMI, just one for Liberty. But Liberty has been killing them in the paint. That's what they need to continue to do. The free throw disparity there, six out of 10. The rebounds is the big story. Liberty with 27 on the glass, just 12 for VMI. And Liberty has taken care of the basketball considering that VMI is trying to force at their rate of 20 turnovers a game. Liberty with just seven in the first half. So a good job by the backcourt, Justin Sanders and, and company. Well, you look at those statistics, though, you would think that Liberty would be up by a wider margin if you just saw the statistics and nothing else. The, the, the shooting percentage, the rebounding disparity, but yet, Duggar Bauckham found, finds himself right in this game, trailing by just five points. And as explosive as this team is, a five-point margin can disappear and evaporate quickly as possible. Well, let's see what happened in halftime as both coaches making adjustments. The chess match continues, and let's face it, two of our favorite coaches in the Big South Conference, Tim. No doubt, of course, Jason Allison, the assistant for VMI, a former player here at Liberty when I was a, a coach 
way back. <laughs> but now he's an assistant at VMI.